Uh, we always say uh, Saturday and Sunday is the weekend. A lot of people looking forward, looking forward. What to look forward? But if you look forward to do something and learn something and enjoy together, this is the best time. And this best time at Love itself, right? There's so many activities running. Today, actually, we call it the live streaming day. So we started way in the morning, 9 a.m. We do exercise. Then after that, we do cooking. And now we are into photography and we're capturing all the moments. So before I actually share about what we are talking about today, we are talking about fascinated world of photography. And the guest why I invited Ik Chun is actually because when I know him that time, he's a regular time on. <laughs> the next time I met him, he's a student. <laughs> so we always say, people always bought out or shit out. He sure has something that he always constantly wants to explore, wanted to learn. So this this uh, session itself, right? I invited him uh, to come to this uh, session itself to share about his journey and uh, a lot of insight and takeaway. And if friends out there, if your friends are always thinking that whether should I do this, should I do that, this is the best time to actually step forward to do something, to learn something. Photography is just a, a small area of interest, but it may trigger us uh, to actually say, hey, if we have not been doing something, why not we try something? So we actually look at uh, each other, very amazed by the turnaround from regular to become student. <laughs> and the key thing, it's not easy, but after you sign on for a while, you're already in a, a working world, then go back to study again. Uh. And the photography journey also very interesting from what I hear from him. You know? So a lot of uh, uh, interesting white trigger points, then we can say tipping point. So uh, Yiching, anything to uh, share with the audience and what is your excitement for today? Uh, I'm excited to share about my various encounters of journey through different types of like photography techniques from petrol to bird, wildlife and street horse and the rest. Uh. So I hope you enjoy my stories and how I managed to uh, come about learning all this myself. Uh. Yes, in fact, uh, in the photography, there almost 15 genres uh, to select, to see what interest you actually to, to embark on. Like some people started with street photography, some people go into food photography, like it changed actually started with birds, started with uh, nature. So there's so many things that as a photographer or your non-photographer that really even like shooting day-to-day -day things like Instagram, Okay, a lot of phones actually, the best camera is in your hand, correct? Yes. This is what we always been taught. So obviously, the best camera is in your hand, you capture that moment. So, uh, like, like what uh, I Ching uh, mentioned, is he will be sharing his journey. So, if you have friends out there, do like and share. Uh, let me take a look who's actually coming in. So, yeah, Cindy, hello, Cindy. Yeah, Cindy actually also love photography. So, you're looking forward to hear your sharing. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'll, I'll go into my slides. The slide that we actually prepared. Yeah. yeah. So we'll add on the slide. Okay. So first thing when I saw this uh the, the slide that uh it just sent to me is why bird and why two different birds? <laughs> yeah. So to, to share a bit uh your your journey to be a trigger point. Say, this is my trigger point. I say why? Okay. Oh so for photography, how I started out is because I used to take photos whenever I go for school excursions. And at that point, I will only use a point to shoot camera and uh, basically capturing every things that I see in my eyes to keep it as a memory. So before I graduated from poly, I had a poly grad trip. And my oh. friends was like, oh, let's go for Japan. And then first thing that came into my mind is that I need a camera. And so I bought a first-hand camera, a Nikon D5000. 300 and I brought it to Japan. So you see the first PowerPoint slides. The first bird on the right is a sparrow. This is the first bird I captured, which turned out to be nice. And this is actually the triggering point that made me go towards like wildlife photography, like into birds. Very interesting. Yeah. You see all, all this out there, you look at this, this bird itself, you may feel that everything you are seeing bird flying around. But to actually, because of this bird that you capture in the screen during the excursion itself, it has been a turning point for him that from not really into deep interest in photography, this little bird is now really seems like the trigger point that I should actually pick up and even do something more. Yeah. Yeah. So for the image on the left is actually me suffering in the rain with the bird. I was actually in Botanic Garden under a rain wow. because the bird was perched at a, a signboard which is like three meters from me and then I decided to slowly creep forward step by step and then wow. keep capturing it. So I finally got a perfect shot after like 
20 over shot. So this is one of my best photo on the photo on the left. Yep. Wow. Wow. So, so actually, in fact, a lot of times people say a rainy day, cloudy day is actually the most uh, boring day. Uh. You may just stay at home or no way to take photo because every picture turns out not so nice, very, very cloudy. Yes. Correct. But it's not correct to what I will look at uh, 18 foot picture. Because even a cloudy day, rainy day, is about patience. It's about really standing there and really capture that, that thing, thing, the scene that you wanted. Yeah. So then let's look at the next picture. Okay, so all throughout my journey for like about four years into wildlife photography, I've been to various places like Botanic Gardens, Sungai Bolo, etc. And I've even been to Johor for photography too. So some of the photos here, like photos, these pictures can be seen uh, everywhere in Singapore, usually in the wildlife environment. And then you have uh, orange valley flower packer, which can be found in Johor, which I went there recently. And orange magpie robin is also another common bird in Singapore. So those are some of the common places we can find our botanic gardens. Any wildlife area, we can actually spot them anywhere, but just need to look out at the trees. You always need to aim towards the tree and look around here for their calls especially because their calls are signs of different birds around. You mean the call is the way you yes. secret the sound? Yes. Oh. Okay, so there's a next slide and I'll wow. demonstrate more about calls. Oh, oh, this, oh, this is there. Sorry, uh, your next door, uh, we have another session also very exciting going on. They're actually using a blender to cook king. So to do the, the, the signature dish, signature item. So man in mind, very fast, we actually zoom in again. So sorry for a bit of uh, uh, destruction, I go back again. So like what uh, actually mentioned, the, the, this slide that we're watching itself, right? You actually go all the way to Malaysia? Yes, uh, Malaysia? Johor Mersing, that around there. Okay. And there's some natural reserve. So uh, the orange valley flower packer was actually taken there. Then I had a three day, two night trip in Malaysia. Basically taking uh, birds and Milky Way. So later I'll explain more about Milky Way. Then uh, uh, we'll now be going to the next slide. Okay. Alright, oh, so what is these two, two, two pictures now? The uh, red jungle fowl is one of the nicer photo I feel because of the silky effect on the background with the clear outline of the bird. For the next one is a black and yellow broad bill. So a bit of technical for this picture is uh, the aperture you use 1.8? Uh, aperture I uh, usually set it to about 7. Yeah. So uh for the black and yellow broad view, it was actually quite a uh, unique story because we actually went to Lancor Forest to actually find this bird on the day itself. So we went there in the morning about seven or eight AM and then we spent the whole morning walking around there playing the cause of the bird. So actually for bird photographers we sometimes use cause to bait them. I see. Yeah, we record their vocal calls and then we play it back to them. So if some of the birds hear it, they will fly down to look for the source. And so these are some of the techniques that we paid them to come down and then we take photo. But to be honest, uh, do not abuse it uh, because it's like uh, calling calling the wolf. Yeah. So if you keep calling the wolf, yeah, you will know, trick the bird to actually. I yeah. uh, always thinking that is it real or is it fake? Yes. So actually, uh, yeah, all these out there are very interesting. But I'm not not a bird photography, but photographer. But to what you check, just share. Uh, when you say call, uh, it's like a voice, a uh, uh, communication language of a bird community. So what they actually recorded this particular voice, uh, voice uh, to call itself to to is it attract or you say something that is very very. Uh, attractive places or where to where to eat. So that's where they gather. That's where you play this music in the background. You're able to gather people, am I right? Yes. So for what I've heard from other seniors, they say that different birds have different calls. So usually they have different kind of call, call songs. Mm. And there are also like different specific calls such as a uh, danger call, food call, and a uh, looking for mate call. So we need to be careful in the sense that if we recorded the wrong one and we keep playing it, we might end up playing the danger call, which okay. will scare all of them away. I so see. sometimes we need to be careful not to over abuse such a system like, like using calls. So for this bird, we actually stayed there for a whole morning and we couldn't find it at all. So after that, we came back in the afternoon and we still couldn't find it. <laughs> As we are packing our way, our way, we start walking down to the hill. And as we exit, I heard this very familiar call. 
And then I wasn't playing the call, but I heard it. So I look at my friend, uh, and he looked at me. He thought uh, that I was the one playing oh, it. Playing it by the real. So I point at the tree, uh, and then I ask, I look at him again. Wow. Then he thought at me. So it's like, oh, it's the bird is here. Wow. So all of us start digging out our camera tools, like my tripod. I take it out and start preparing and look around. So we finally spotted it, and it gave us about a good five minutes to capture our at least fifty over shots. That we are very happy with it because we are here for this bird. And this only bird. And, and the last day, you actually finally see on the and last the call, day. And the call that three, what you thought you are playing in yeah. the background. So we thought that we are the one playing it, but no, we are, we are not. It's actually the bird that came down, and we are lucky on that day that it came down for us as we are leaving. Actually, in, uh, uh, in the Chinese word, we call it "you si zhe zi zi." What you really wanted so much, huh? It actually happened. Yes. Yeah, and they have the patience to continue, and then it really happened. Yeah. So really interesting. Uh, sharing. Yeah. So for general book photography, uh, we usually use a telescopic lens such as at least two hundred and above, and then um, usually we will always put it into autofocus because some of the birds are very skittish and still you need to track them, and they will always jump around from branches to branches. Like in Malaysia, I a few birds such as the Malkoha, and they are very jumpy in the sense that they will jump from branches to branches and it's very hard to so it's too late. Yeah, so usually we will need photo focus for it and for different when they are on the tree inside the dense forest, we will always need a uh, high ISO and then lower uh, faster shutter speed to capture the crisp crisp uh shots of their feathers but because of the lighting issue we need to compensate in terms of iso and probably uh increase a uh, decrease in uh widen up the aperture for more light to enter the lens so okay. it's a, a difficulty when because once they are in the dark it's hard to get them yes, yeah. yes, yes. Okay, in fact, for, for those uh, friends out there uh, you've actually always been using camera phone uh, uh, what uh, I think mentioned is actually a bit of technical. So yes. people are uh, talking about speed of light. So you use aperture, you change your ISO, or you actually increase your speed. So these are things that actually make the picture sharp in the background or crystal clear about the whole scenery itself. So a lot of times, really, it's about patience and technical knowledge. So you can say, if you want to go to the next level, it can even say, we can do live when we outdoor. Maybe we do live when we do a bird uh, setting or nature setting. Uh, we do live and share with you all that how it's being taken. Well, what we share here is a lot of theory. But what you're trying to share is actually his journey. So some take away that we always say is trigger point. If, I, if you are a friend out there that is Saturday, Sunday, or not been able to think about what can I do, do something. Photography is a good start. Yes. Yes. So next one. Okay, so this is uh, some of the photography technique that I touch and go on. So from the far left is a portrait photography from a, it was taken in uh, Japan, which I went on my on my uh, my trips. So I was actually on a solo trip walking around, and then I saw this uncle, he's coloring painting, and I decided to approach him and ask okay. him, "Can I take a photo of you?" I see. And he agreed. So I managed to get a photo of him painting with the scenery behind. So uh, this. Kind of general okay, photography is something that I don't really usually take, but it was kind of amazing because I wanted this memory to be photographed down. It's like I I want this scene of the uncle painting with a background of what Japan offer for us. Yeah. So for, for me, it's a wonderful memory of me being there, saw this uncle, and I had a chit chat with him. Yeah. Very good. Actually, this are recording the moment itself. It's not just taking that scene, it's taking behind the scene. So we call it the GBTF <laughs> behind the scene. And again, to, to, to actually, this is story. So to us, actually, if you actually look at scenery itself, you can be embraced yourself into this scenery. A very good memory, you start capturing on the camera, but also in your memory itself. So a lot of time photography allow us uh, to appreciate nature. Yeah. So for the center piece, uh, it's actually some lightning across my outside my house view and these are actually composite photos which uh i blended about three photos different photos into one because there's the lightnings are from three different shots taken and because they are like different timing so i have to actually stitch them together in photo photoshop and this the output uh. actually very, very interesting because a lot of times we say photos capture that moment but in fact some picture needs to be conceptualized some picture needs to post process 
you see layer, layer, layering, right? Yes. So actually the thunder is done, you strike one here, and another one there, but it's really about patient, really setting your tripod right, eventually you layer it, so that's how the picture turns out. Yes. But technical part, maybe you can discuss with Yixing, do one more session to really talk about Photoshop, editing, photo actually, how to do montage, or even do the time lapse later on. Yeah. Uh, so the next photo is in Japan also, which uh, there's a mouse Fuji at the back. So these are some of the street photography that I took, which to me, I also really touched on, but that scene was amazing. With yeah. The Mount Fuji at the it's like painting, uh, it's like painting. Uh, yeah. and the vanishing point at the foreground. So to me, it's quite amazing, and I decided to quickly snap it and keep it as a memory for myself. Very good. Yeah. Actually, in fact, uh, a friend out there really, it's, it's really about capturing memory. It is only how, and it's only actually can it be taken even better way, and to keep it for memory and keep improving, keep discovering, right? Yes. Yeah. So oh. this thing. National Day is already coming. Yeah. Some people are already capturing the weekly, every weekend, are already following up all these uh, fireworks. So to Eching, what this picture, how special to you is this, this picture? Oh, so this photo is special because I went on a day trip with my cyber friend. So we actually met online and then we had similar hobby photography. So okay. he invited me to take fireworks and he taught me how to do it. And also, is the one that also triggered me into taking landscape photos, okay. which in turn translate into uh, time lapse photography. Okay. Because from landscape, I want instead of having a frozen piece of image, I want a movie, like how the clouds move, oh. how the environment reacts to the movement of yes, 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 the yes. passage of time. So from landscape, I translate to time photography which will be explained later as well okay the, the next one actually audience out there you'll be very excited also yeah. to us actually a lot of time we look at moments and we take picture click and that, that's all even we take video it's only slowly capturing but the thing that's not actually mentioned from this picture he triggered him that you know took more landscaping pictures and actually to make it into a time lapse so next 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 slide uh next slide so this is astrography which i'll also touch on a bit uh from there's three of it, two is actually moon and there's a lunar, uh, solar eclipse on the wow. far right. It's actually a solar eclipse that is the recent one, few yeah. years, I think it was two, two years or three years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was quite lucky because I didn't have a proper solar filter. And then if I were to just outright photograph it, my sensor will spoil. So luckily on that day, the clouds moved in and it covered the sun entirely. Which somehow I managed to quickly take a step of it. Uh. I like the trans transition being captured. Yeah. And the key thing actually, in fact, the, the moon itself with the cloud itself, so very, very mystic. Yeah. And the moon itself, we can take some people use iPhone, uh, the Huawei, uh, the Zoom, Zoom, they can capture similar. Yeah. But oh, same thing again, it is really must be the right time, right place also, right? Yes. So on the left is a composite photo made out of different photos. So this is actually taken in Lunar Eclipse. And I took a few uh, from outside my window. I took an interval of every 15 minutes, I think it was short. Every 15 minutes. Then from the partial covered to the end, it, it actually started from the after the eclipse and then it slowly come up, come up from the shadows. So it's a composite photo of it as uh, the moon, uh, the sun, uh, move, uh, our earth shadows move away from the moon for lunar eclipse. Interesting. Yeah. Actually, uh, the, the next lunar eclipse actually do watch out. There'll be actually a lot of uh, interesting moments to capture. But uh, really, get yourself prepared. Also, equipment is important, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is the Milky Way, and this is the trip where I went to Malaysia, the recent one for bird photography as well. So in the day trip, we took birds, and at night we took Milky Way. Yep. So I think, we use our time efficiently. Uh. Yep. I think a lot of time uh, Milky Way started when people talk about northern light. Yes. No, 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 I can see the green color, then you know, the, the, you can see the star. But in fact, as close as to our home, uh, Malaysia also got such a nice setting if you want to, by doing a placing at the right time and using the right techniques. Yes. So how I get about doing Milky Way, my poly lecturer, uh, he actually invited me for what, What's his name? What's his name? Uh, Raymond. So much thanks, Raymond, yeah. okay, to, to really trigger and guide this exchange to this is the first First time you tried Milky Way? Uh, yes. Wow. So he actually taught me how to take the photos and how to edit. Wow. And when we were there, he taught me some of the tricks and how to frame our shots. And from there, we start uh, editing and then learning from it. 
So oh, one yeah. day must ask the uh, lecturer, uh, Raymond, uh, to come and share with us more in depth about Milky Way, actually more of your journey also. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, if you all have been browsing my my share news, he was actually fe- featured in one of the articles for his Milky Way. Yes, after the trip, he posted a few photos in a row. Oh wow! In a short span, uh, So he got featured, and his photos are really amazing. Wow. Actually, very, very nice, right? Uh, audience yes. out there. You actually, in fact, one night you see your way, but other people spend the night by taking such a nice memories and see very colorful sky that a lot of time we miss out. Okay, so for in Singapore, we actually photograph it, but there's some requirements for it. Uh. Oh. Uh, for example, your lens have to be a uh, wide aperture one, at least focal, uh, f2.8 for the aperture, and then you need about 1,600 ISO at least to even 2002. I see. And you need at least 25 seconds of exposure. Exposure. Yeah. So your widest aperture with about 20 over seconds to 30 over seconds depends on the camera. And in Singapore, you actually need to do composite lighting together. So it's like uh, there's an app called Secreator where they will help you photo stack all the different image together and align them. Oh, wow. Wonderful. So, it's like Paranormal yeah. stitching. This actually is actually... Uh, so layer, by layer. layer by layer. Yeah, so in Singapore, we can actually capture Milky Way, but in an indirect way. La. Okay, so friends out there, actually, if you thought of Milky Way, go to London, like, no need, no need. You don't even need to go to Johor now. You can go to Singapore itself. Yes. And Singapore itself, use the right techniques and right apps. La. We also can do it. So uh, uh, definitely, yeah. I want to try one of these days. Where's the best location in Singapore? Just a quick one. Uh, Which location? East side, west side? Tinjuka. Tinjuka. Oh, even the cemetery. <laughs> yes, uh, there's some shots that are taken there. Like, in the cemetery? I saw, I saw online. Oh. Yeah, but a bit creep, scary. Like, yeah. Especially when it's very pitch dark at night. Wow. So for Milky Way in Singapore, you would like to have no moon, essentially. Okay. So if you know what time the moon sets, and if the time coincides and there's no clouds you can actually photograph my shots uh. I see. and in dark condition like maybe in chukang or those uh, out of the way area which no light pollution uh. okay well, uh, one day one day we'll arrange uh, a live session uh. maybe it's a, it's a night photography uh, <laughs> at cemetery uh. <laughs> okay but we we'll definitely will do something that's really live outdoor that we can do and shoot and share together instead of just looking at picture it's a, just a trigger point just a, a why like uh taking talk of one single bird itself trigger him this, this sharing session hopefully will trigger us, us and people out there uh, to actually do something that maybe we can do outing together. Yeah. A photo outing together to do something and shoot at the same time. And you'll be the one to share about your experience. <laughs> okay, next one. So, so uh, it's also from Malaysia, the same area, Mersing. And you can see the uh, Milky Way core and also some of the foreground which I took. Yeah. Yep. Really very, very, very nice, very colorful. It's, uh, a bit like uh, very universal. Uh, the galaxy and then yes. color. Okay, so now we are into time lapse. This is actually uh Henderson Wave Bridge, the place where I met with uh Emma himself. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Yep, moving in. Yep. So those are motions and the photos are like two to three, two seconds per shot. So you actually can see like the person moving, the effect of the person moving and then it's as a cloud formation as the as the as it moves around along the movement uh, and the sun is actually setting as it goes okay so, very very memorable uh time left because it's where me and I Ching we met yeah. that's where i told you that where he's still signing on as a regular back there yes. that's where he actually shared me how to do a time lapse and actually it's not using a normal phone itself actually do a proper camera yeah so actually see from the day to the night and the transition is so wonderful yeah yeah interesting Okay. Next one. Next one. Another time. Time lapse. So this is one of my favorite piece. We do right the ball. Is it yes. correct? You stay top you, right? Yes. Wow. You go all the way to. Okay. So we will go to the max resolution. Okay. So I actually woke up at five five plus a.m. for this. Buffering. Yeah, buffering. You got to think the higher resolution. Yeah. Huh? It takes slower. Yeah. Really no, it's buffering. smooth. Huh? Yeah. yeah. The, the, it's uh, supposed to show more high definition. But uh, because of the screaming, it's actually delayed. That time that becomes slower. Yeah. So maybe we can lower it a bit. Lower it a bit, yeah. 
the interesting part about time lag is actually in fact you can see a lot of transition happening a lot of time we actually look at cloud yeah but actually you can look at traffic you can look at people movement you can do a lot of things that actually you never think about at that quick second you can complete compress everything to five seconds five one yeah. minute for this is actually about 10 seconds 10 seconds oh it's actually very slow yeah it's moving, moving. Okay, so this, okay, uh, okay. yeah. So you, you can see, see like three, three waves of movement from the clouds. Yeah. And then the color change of the non mm. and higher. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So this is a uh, immersing where the we were taking the night of the Milky Way and then at the same time I was doing some shots of it to into we are supposed to do star trial but uh, I decided to skip it for now and make it into a time lapse of the stars moving uh. mm. Actually, uh, you to look at a real, uh, more uh, smoother video itself, right? You can follow Exchange uh, Instagram yeah. or Facebook itself. You actually post this video itself. It will be very interesting to see how the transition over here because we were doing live and we are using Wi-Fi and they actually being shared at the same time, it's actually slightly lagging. Yes. So actual time lapse should be very, very fast. You can see movement, the start moving. So, yeah. Maybe we'll go to the next one. Okay. Yeah. So this should be the last one, is it? Uh, I believe so. So, oh, uh, yeah. This is from outside my house, and it was taken about five plus PM nice. to about seven PM plus. So there's like moving traffic, moving clouds, and transition between from sunset to night. Yeah, so actually, as, yeah. You can see like the color start changing from the sun, and then. Street golden hours, start, golden hours. Yeah, the yeah. street lights start to turn on. Yeah. And then you can see the lights of the vehicle start to come out. Very interesting. You can yeah. see all these transitions, the, the, especially from the uh, blue hours to golden hours and to the, the sun, sunset itself. Huh? And the flickering of people owning off and offing their lights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the opposite block, okay, huh? and the car is moving at the bottom itself. Yeah. So all this, the compress it, it's supposed to take how long? The actual. Uh, actual I think I hour? took about four hours to four, four hours. three hours and it compressed down to 30 seconds. Patient. Okay, to me, I thought it's half an hour, but yeah. the key thing is four hours to compress into one minute. Around there. Yeah. One minute. Else, uh, we will usually take 24 shots wow. into one second. Yeah. So it's actually taking a lot of photographs, like thousands over photographs, and then merging every 24 will be one second. Yeah. And so that's how time has done about that. Okay, so that should be all. For right. the tools, you will need like intravalometer and let it set on the auto shot shooting uh. and then as you take you need to check the timing and the exposure make sure that they don't run out of, out of exposure too bright or too, too dim uh. yeah you always check the exposure value and make sure that everything is smooth uh, and don't hit your tripod as you are filming uh photographing if yeah, not yeah. you have a shake and shake, uh, shake yeah yeah so, so uh, audience out there, actually, you, you are not into the technical part. The only thing you hear is the shaking part. But the key thing, actually, there's so many technical parts that you want, can, can learn at the same time. But seriously, if you're really interested to go into more in-depth about uh, so called the time lapse, uh, also the Milky Way, do PMR. Do PMR, or even you can any photography uh, interest that you wanted us to share, do PMR so that we can actually share what we've actually been through. And actually, some, some of the techniques itself can even go deeper. But for today's session, it's really about talking about what inspired change. Yes. What changes him? He ever tell me why from army sign on become study. But then that's another journey. But from photography journey itself, you can see everybody has a trigger point, but you keep learning. And that's the best part of photography. There's always something new and you go to location, new places, new friends. Yes. Yeah. Ah, Eddie. Oh, Hello, hi, Eddie. Eddie, Eddie, your friend. Yes. Hello, Eddie. So he's also a live streamer. Live streamer. Yeah. Eddie, so you see a photographer? 
Uh, yes, he's a photographer and videographer. Videographer? Yeah. Hey, Eddie, one day I must ask you to come to our loft here uh, to do together, okay? Very interesting to, to share everybody's journey. That's where photography connects. And you're actually into videography, even more interesting. I want to see more of your, your work. So how you get to know? Okay, we will share more next time. But in the meantime, uh, any other takeaways or your encouragement to people that newbies or people already into it but I haven't tried before? Oh, uh, always explore around different general and different techniques. So it's a fun hobby to do, especially when you keep memories of what you've seen so far in your life. And then maybe 10 years later, you can look back at photos, look at all the things you have done and refresh your memory from there. Very meaningful. Yeah. Very meaningful. In fact, uh, you were to ask two of us stand up, you'll see that he's so tall, my height is like that, so, so, so short, but we are friends and we photography connect together. And yes. we are from stranger, from photography, we don't talk to each other. Now we are sitting down to share his story and to be inspired by each other. So have a good weekend. Looking forward for the next sharing session for each chain. I think definitely there's more moments that you can share with us. Okay, so in the meantime, PM us or share your friends. Like and share. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Nice weekend. Nice weekend. Ah, Eddie. Okay.